families really bond when they're in here. Mm -hmm. You have one hour without your cell phone. Where in the world do you get to do that? Hi everyone, welcome to Rooting for Everybody Black, your visual index for all things black excellence. I'm your host, Ashley B, and today we're in New Rochelle at Hour to Exit to find out how the owners, Brittany Coleman and Dwayne Sequera, ventured into a business of mystery solving fun. So tell me what Hour to Exit is. Hour to Exit is an immersive escape room experience located in New Rochelle. We have three immersive escape rooms and we're building our fourth game right now. Why did you name it Hour to Exit? So I knew I wanted all the games to be one hour. Okay. Um, working at the teen center for a while, we had all out one hour games and that's a great time point. Most escape rooms are an hour. You will find some that are less or a bit more times, but uh, one hour is enough time for people to really get immersed and enjoy the experience. And what type of games would you say that you offer? Um, we offer very unique different games. Um, games that uh, you won't really see anywhere else. We have a magic theme room, which we're sitting in right now. We have a college dorm room. We have two of those, which is very unique because you can race against each other. Um, there's no other escape room in the New York area that you can split and race against each other. And then our newest game, Robin Tiffany's, is a very different type of twist on a jewelry heist theme. So let's talk about how you got started with Hour to Exit. So I got started way back in 2015, 2014 um, at my old job. I used to work at Scarsdale Teen Center before um, they closed down. And my job there as a program director was to bring in really fun experiences for the teens in the Scarsdale area. And one of the main jobs was to create a fundraiser that the kids can participate in and also create some funds. Um, and we started doing haunted houses at the time and we did that for about two years but unfortunately because of the finite time of the Halloween season we wasn't able to generate enough funds to make it profitable and to continue it on and then at the same time while we were considering changing the haunted house fundraiser escape rooms came on the scene and uh, my boss was like I played this game and I'm not sure exactly what it is and it was really hard for her to explain what it was and uh, she was like you and your friend which is Dwayne my business partner go play and see what you think and if it's something you can bring here we played it and we could not stop talking about the game from the time we got out the room the whole ride home on the subway we could not stop talking about it and I was like yeah I think this is something we actually can do um, I read online that you play you and your partner played at least a hundred games is that true yeah I'm probably over 250 now my partner he's still about 100 he need to catch up <laughs> um, uh, yes but yes I I am obsessed yeah. when it comes to these games. Let's talk about opening day. Walk me through what that was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous, um, especially like, I was extremely nervous. Opening the day, we actually did not open with any of the games that we have out now. We opened with a Christmas theme game because we opened during the holiday season. Um, so we had a actually a 30 minute Christmas game that was in that was in the now dorm rules game. And we wanted to do something really small because we were still in the middle of building out these rooms. It takes about six to nine months to just build an hour long game. Wow. Um, so the Christmas room only took us about a month maybe a month and a half to gather all the pieces and things like that. So opening day, we opened and then News 12 came. <laughs> and they actually came uh, maybe a week or so before we were open and I was so nervous. I almost canceled on them because I'm like, we don't have any, at the time we didn't have most of the hallway uh, painted. And he was like, that's okay, we'll just film a few of things. I was like, okay. Like he, I, I, a few times I like kind of send him messages like, yeah, we're not ready. He was like, nope, it's okay. It's okay, we're coming. Don't like, we're coming. Cause it was like nothing happening in the news, I guess. And then we made the front page, a Friday news story front page. All my family was calling that day like, oh my God. And I'm like, he didn't tell me that. <laughs> he did not say that. He just said, we're gonna be on the, like, the in the news. And it, we made the front page and the news story and it like really helped our sales. So. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, more people know about it, more sales coming yes. in, which is obviously the goal. Um, okay. so. You're located in New Rochelle, but you're from Yonkers. Yes. What made you choose this town for that location? So at the time, New Rochelle had New Rock City. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure that we were close to an existing recreation center so that um, we can get spillover if they were busy. Let's talk about some of the hard stuff, right? So we all, we just came out of the pandemic. 
still in it, really. <laughs> right, three years out, but it's still going with some heightened COVID, yes. you know, and whatnot. So talk to me about hardships that you may have dealt with, right? For example, the pandemic, as mm -hmm. I just mentioned. It was hard. <laughs> I was not sure, but we have an amazing landlord. Um, so much so when we were looking for a place to be, so many landlords were like, no, I don't know what that is. It sounds like <laughs> a haunted house. And he was the first one to be like, oh, I played tons of those with my oh. kids. Absolutely, let's do that. He was the first one to say yes. Um, and uh, he was the first one was like, hey, I know it's hard for you guys. Pay me what you can, when you can. And he has never been hounding like for, for the money during COVID and he's just, super champion for our rooms to be open. He's really, really great. That's important, mm -hmm. that's key. Okay, so let's talk about what motivated you to keep going. You know, uh -huh. after you dealt with that hardship, mm -hmm. you know, you probably didn't know when you were gonna open up again, right. right? Because we, back in 2020, it was, everybody was up in limbo. Nobody yeah. knew what this disease was. Right. <laughs> Killing people left and right. So what was that driving factor that you know, was in your head, I can I can do this, we're gonna open back up, like what was that? So you? many things, number one, my customers, we would almost every day, hey, are you guys open? Are you guys open? Every day we would get an email, every day we would get a call. Um, so that was a driving force. Um, and then I would say just my, me, I'm the type of person like, it's gonna happen, it's going to happen. I'm very positive when it comes to my mindset and everything, it's going to happen. If I say it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. You know, and I, I pray to God and say, you know, get us through this. And when you pray, you pray and expect it. So I expect it to happen, so here we are. Okay, so pretend I have the ability to give you a grant, a okay. huge grant that's gonna <laughs> blow your business up further than it already mm -hmm. is. In a nutshell, why should I invest in our to exit? Oh, why should you invest? I would say, our tax said we are dedicated to making sure that our customers come in having a great time and leaving with a smile on their face, bigger than the one they started with. Um, you get to bond and you get to really see your teammates, but whether it's your family or your friends, your coworkers, utilize their brain in a way you don't get to see often. During COVID, we all were on our phone, like more than ever before. And uh, a parent walked out once and was like, it was my first time seeing my child without their phone. Wow. And I don't know about you, but we were not raised mm -hmm. with cell phones. But the, the younger this generation, generation they, are, they know how to swipe <laughs> before they get out of the womb. The baby. Yes, and I'm like, they know how to swipe before they get out of the womb. She was like, I've never not seen them without a phone for more than an hour, unless they were sleeping. Um, you know, <laughs> it's like, if they don't have school, they're on their laptops yeah. or everything doing, and she, she just couldn't believe it. And until this day, also outside of the kids, we've had six wedding proposals, marriage proposals in here. Um, and people find that, find our wow. place so unique and so special to do, uh, to, to propose to their girlfriend. And I find it like, what, us? What room did that happen? It always happens mostly in here. We yeah. had another game before we um, closed it down, Pandora's Box, which oh. is a great, great one that, um, they had their, their ring in them, but it often happens in this room because we can hide the other part of the family in the oh, other room. Oh my yes, God. So it happens a lot. So when they open that door and they see all of their family back there and the guy on the floor, it, it's always like, wow. <gasps> yeah, so just some special moments like that. Where else can you do that? Nowhere else. Wow, that's so cool. I would've yes. never thought that. Cause yeah, like you, you gotta look for stuff and you know, she opens up the drawer and there's a... Yeah, and they no, don't even expect it because they're thinking, oh, this is another box yeah. part of the game. And they open like, wait, a ring? This is yeah. not a part of the story. And then he's down on the floor and it's like, you really catch them off guard as at the same time they're having a great time. Yeah. So then like the last proposal we had, the girl was like, no, 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 like, yes, yes, yes. She's like, yes. And then like, we need to win. Yeah. <laughs> like, she was so into because like, we need time. to win. Yes, it's time. We do pause it when that whole time, don't, right. <laughs> like we don't let the time keep running, but we pause it and then we are, everyone is in the office. We're taking video, we're oh getting it all. That's yeah. amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, what would you say um, is your biggest piece of advice to aspiring entrepreneurs? Not just people who want to open up escape rooms, but young black women, young black men that want to be entrepreneurs, what's advice that you would give them? So much advice, but <laughs> number one, I would say, make sure you're working. Make sure you're working, not like, 
don't pretend to work or make it look like you're working. Really work on your craft, wh whatever it may be. As I mentioned, I put myself last year through an engineering program. Um, right now I'm in the middle of a grant writing program. Um, make sure you are working to build your skills and not just to look like you're working. I see that a lot. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm hearing from you is do the work. Do the work. Do the work, yes. It, it, it's, that's so important because once you do the work, once you get the work, then the reward comes. You know, it's you. it doesn't come just because you're pretending to do the work for social media or the gram or whatever. Do yeah, the do the work.